The year was 1866. My name is Professor Pierre Aronnax. I am a scientist and an author of the acclaimed book Mysteries of the Ocean Depth. I study undersea life and I remember it was around that time when mysteries started developing in the ocean world. Ships from many countries were being attacked by an enormous thing. No one knew whether this thing was a sea creature, a rock or a reef. It, however, left a triangular hole in the destroyed vessels. One day, my servant Conseil brought me a letter. The United States government have organized an expedition to search and destroy this thing. The letter was an invitation for me to join them. On board the Abraham Lincoln, we met Ned Land, a Canadian harpooner with a sharp eye. The Abraham Lincoln set sail and for three months, we found nothing. But one day, Ned alerted everyone on board. A large shadow was coming fast towards the ship. It had a long body and a mysterious glow. We fired cannons at it, but the creature was not harmed. Ned threw his harpoon at it with a good aim. It hit the creature, but we were surprised that the harpoon bounced off and it made a metallic clanging sound. The creature crashed into our ship. We were thrown overboard into the water. I struggled to stay above water. I felt a hand dragging me up. It was my loyal servant, Conceal. The ship was sinking. Ned had managed to climb on top of the creature. He reached out his hand to pull us up. The other members of the ship's crew were nowhere to be seen. The creature turned out to be an underwater vessel shaped like a fish. A man with stern face opened a door hatch and observed us without saying a word. After a moment, his crewmen took us down the iron ladder into total darkness. For three days, we were kept as prisoners. They fed us good food and we were not harmed in any way, but Ned started to feel restless. Until one day he couldn't take it anymore, he knocked down the steward who brought our food. The same man who met us before addressed us this time. His name is Captain Nemo. He didn't know whether we were enemies or friends. We are to be his prisoners, but he gave us freedom to wander around his ship. Captain Nemo was a terrifying man. He broke all ties with a civilized world and answers to no one. His home is this underwater ship, the Nautilus, and his companions were his crewmen. Captain Nemo showed me around his ship. It was a wonder of science and knowledge. The rooms were so large. One of it, he made it into a museum filled with many rare artifacts. Captain Nemo brought me to another room. It was the engine room. Everything was powered by electricity. To my amazement, electricity had not been a widespread power source yet. The science behind this ship was beyond its time. We continued to be spellbound by the wondrous sights over the next few days. I was able to observe marine life in its natural state. As a scientist, I could not tell you how exciting this was to me. One day, I received an invitation for a hunt from Captain Nemo. It was a hunt, not on the surface, but an underwater hunt. We will be wearing special suits that will allow us to breathe underwater. We put on the special suits and moved to a compartment. Soon, the room began to fill with water. The door slowly opened to reveal the vast ocean floor. We hiked a few miles until we came to a wonderful sea garden called the Forest of Crespo Island. Everywhere I saw different species of all sorts of sea creatures. But traveling in a submarine was not without its perils. One day, as we were traveling on the Torres Strait, our ship hit a rock. We had to wait for the high tide in five days to be free. Ned had other ideas. Ned was itching for a good hunt. He was tired of eating fish. With the captain's permission, we went ashore. Ned killed a wild boar in this hunt. We made a fire to roast the meat, eagerly anticipating eating it after so long. Before we could enjoy our feast, we were attacked by a rain of arrows. It was the natives on that island. They were known to be cannibals. They saw our fire and came to capture us. We had no choice but to escape back to the Nautilus.
The natives came after us as well. We were afraid they would get inside the submarine. Captain Nemo did not show any fear. As soon as the natives tried to get on board, they were electrocuted. Captain Nemo had set this trap to ward off unwanted visitors. As soon as high tide came, the Nautilus set off. A few weeks later, we were asked to remain in our cells. The captain did not give a reason why. He brought us our meals, but halfway through eating, we all closed our eyes. They had drugged our food. When I regained consciousness, Captain Nemo asked me to look at one of his men. He had been severely injured. There was no hope. I asked Captain Nemo about this, but he would not tell me anything. The next day, they buried that man on the ocean ground. We said a little prayer for that man. His body will remain in the ocean forever, covered by the corals. Life goes on in the Nautilus. Captain Nemo one day announced that there was going to be a pearl hunt. But we were warned to be extra careful because the pearl beds were infested with sharks. I shuddered at the thought. Sharks terrified me. Captain Nemo saw a shark about to attack a local pearl diver. He tried to rescue him. The shark turned around to attack Captain Nemo instead. Ned threw his harpoon at the shark, killing it before it could sink its teeth on Captain Nemo. Not all the underwater excursions were dangerous. When we were traveling along Vigo Bay in Spain, Captain Nemo revealed sunken treasures on the ground. His crewmen took all these treasures to the Nautilus. Now I understand where he got his relics in his museum. Captain Nemo wanted to show me another lost treasure. He brought me to a place at the Atlantic Ocean which looks like a sunken city. There was a large volcano spitting out lava. Captain Nemo wrote on the rock, Atlantis. This was the lost city of Atlantis. I was lost for words. Despite all these wonders, our lives were constantly in danger. One time, while cruising in the South Pole, our submarine was blocked by huge icebergs. If we do not get out, we would run out of air. I did not wish to die on the Nautilus, away from the rest of the world. Captain Nemo tried one last thing. He crashed the Nautilus at full speed onto the icebergs. Thankfully, it worked, and we were able to break free. But that incident had changed me. I could no longer stay on board the Nautilus. Our chance of escape came when we were cruising on the surface in Ireland. A ship spotted us and began firing. I had the notion that it was a similar warship to the Abraham Lincoln sent out to search and destroy the Nautilus. I decided we cannot stay any longer. That night, I crept past the lounge with Ned and Conseil. I saw Captain Nemo playing on the organ. The music was soft and sad. On the wall hung a portrait of a woman and two small children. We got on the lifeboat and started rowing towards the ship. But alas, we met a violent whirlpool, the male strong. We struggled to free ourselves, but in the end, we were thrown right into the middle of the whirlpool. I lost consciousness. When I opened my eyes, I was lying on a bed of a fisherman's cottage with Ned and Conseil beside me. How we survived the whirlpool, I don't know, but I'm glad to be alive. I am writing all this down in my journal. My journey has left me with many unanswered questions. What happened to the Nautilus? Did it survive the whirlpool? What happened to Captain Nemo? Was it all just a dream? If Captain Nemo is alive, I hope that strange, remarkable man finds peace in his heart.